What's going on, everyone? This is Andy. I'm here to give you some of my favorite bets going into this NFC Championship game. We got these 49ers taking on this Eagles. The spread is two and a half, which means I have no clue who I'm going to take. However, you know, two and a half at home, you're always kind of tempted to take the home team. But one thing I can guarantee you that you should be taking is the DraftKings Sportsbook promotion they got going on where you bet $5 on anything, anything in any sport. And your account, if you're a new user, will immediately be credited with $200 in free bet credits. You just got to be a new user. You got to be located in an area where sports betting is legal. You got to be over 21 and you can't be having all sorts of problems. If you got a problem, can't let you in this video. You got to call one 800 gambler because they will help you with that problem and for the rest of you i'm going to help you with a couple of bets but the only problem is once again you know these niners bets with me they withhold my favorite ones until the last second like a guy who refuses to flip over his cards at the end of a poker hand they won't do it because once again no matter who is in the backfield of the 49ers everybody apparently is always injured whether it's Mostert or Breida or Coleman or Wilson or these guys or those guys everybody's hurt kind of Christian McCaffrey if you saw in the second half of that game we never hit our receiving total because he was out of the game on first downs and second downs only ended up with 10 carries and then he was nursing that calf issue and didn't practice for the majority of the week now he's off the injury report am i supposed to just believe he's fine then elijah mitchell who's young but apparently made of glass we don't know if he's gonna play maybe he'll be active we don't know his level of involvement but what have i told you all year about the niners if there's only one healthy back who's getting a ton of touches especially in a must-win game where if you lose you're going home Debo Samuel. My favorite bet for this game is not even listed yet, and it's going to be the over on Debo Samuel rushing and receiving. I think he's going to get an ample amount of opportunities. I've always said if they're playing a team where they're like double digit favorites and they have McCaffrey and they have Mitchell, don't touch any like sort of Debo rushing. But this is the perfect time to utilize those Debo rushing props. I haven't even seen them yet. The only way I was able to see a little crevice into what the line might be if you open a same game parlay on DraftKings Sportsbook. They have Debo alternate rushing there. So at least I can gauge. It looks like they're going to put it around 22 or 23 or something like that. But I like the over on his receiving. I like the over on his rushing. But I really like the over on receiving plus rushing because if he busts one running the ball on an end around or something, which we saw a couple weeks ago, or he just takes a screen from behind the line of scrimmage to the house, we'll hit that total. And I just like having the opportunity of hitting that long play from both in the backfield and as a receiver. In a different game, I wouldn't be so excited to take that if he was just getting two carries like in that first playoff game that they played. But in this particular game against the Eagles where you know they want to try to protect Brock Purdy on the road in that raucous environment where they throw beers at Santa Claus, I am loving me some Debo Samuel in this game. With him, do you always have to be a little worried of an injury? Yes, but we can't be going into these bets, you know, saying, oh, well, you know, I'm going to be halfway there. I mean, that's what happened with our McCann Caffrey bet last week. We were well on our way to the receiving, and then all of a sudden he wasn't playing in that second half as much. So it's just a, a risk you got to take, but I'm loving me some Debo Samuel in that game. On the other side of the ball, we didn't see much A.J. Brown last week. What was it, three for 20-something? It was a Devontae Smith game, and we saw many times throughout the course of the season after Devontae Smith had a big game, what did they follow up with? A nice A.J. Brown game. I have no problem taking the over on A.J. Brown receiving yards, but you want to know what I feel more comfortable on? The longest reception for A.J. Brown. We've seen him take so many of those sideline throws and make miraculous catches, but even on top of that, he's one of the best run after the catch receiver. He can take a 12-yard slant an extra 25 yards. We've also seen that a whole bunch of times. I love the longest reception, the over for A.J. Brown. And obviously, if I like something like that, I'm also going to take the over on the longest completion for Jalen Hurts. When you look at the San Francisco defense and the way you're able to attack them, 
it's attacking those cornerbacks. CeeDee Lamb had 10 catches. The only problem for them is they don't have that compliment like Devontae Smith. Maybe Michael Gallup next year or something when he's another year removed from that torn ACL. But you got to attack their cornerback. CeeDee Lamb had nine or 10 catches. I think A.J. Brown's going to have some great opportunities to, to, you know, burn them and burn them deep. Same thing with Devontae Smith. He's a great deep receiver. So one of these throws going 35, 40, 45, 50. <laughs> I like the over on the longest completion for Jalen Hurts in that particular game. Now, on the San Fran side of the ball, I, I, I don't, I almost feel like they're trying to trick me because the line looks so juicy. This is a bet that has hit for us so many times with Brock Purdy because I've thought that, you know, they want to protect Brock Purdy. And how do you do that? Throws underneath, screens, and completions to the tight end. And who's been killing it more than George Kittle? throughout this stretch while Brock Purdy has started. And the answer, obviously, is nobody. Kittle has been absolutely killing it. He's probably been the most dominant tight end in the league since Purdy, Purdy's taken over. And when you think about early in this game, what the hell is Shanahan going to dial up to keep the pressure off? Because you know that line's going to be coming after him. You got to be thinking some George Kittle in this one. I, I like taking the over on him. The only thing that scares me is that the line almost looks like they're baiting me to take it. And I never want to be that guy that gets baited into taking a bet. And then after the fact, I knew it was set so low. I shouldn't have taken it. But it's come through for us so much. Even if I do lose, I'm willing to ride it to the end. Give me the over on George Kittle receiving yards. And if I knew McCaffrey was healthy, especially with Mitchell potentially not playing and being severely limited, hasn't practiced at all. I think he got one limited practice, but wasn't available to the media or anything like that in that portion of the practice. I would take the over on Christian McCaffrey receiving yards, but we can't be having something happen like last week where that camp cramp comes up and then he's getting that stim on the sideline. Now we just need him to make catches on third down. I feel a little too worried, you know, relying on that. So I'm going to stay away from that, even though my gut tells me that probably is the best one to take. It's another reason why I love Debo Samuel. I really think he's going to have a bunch of chances to impact this game. We know Shanahan loves using him in must-win situations. And then lastly, over on DraftKings Sportsbook, you guys got a nice little taste of this last week when I took a couple of those head-to-heads. We took Jalen Hurts to throw more touchdown passes than Daniel Jones. I love this part of the bet. So you know what? If you're one of those people, you created a new account, you deposited uh, or you bet $5, and now you have 200 free bet credits to use, I see two in there that I really like. Number one, that aforementioned George Kittle. I will take him over Dallas Goddard. Do you see what Dalton Schultz did to the Niners last week? Yeah, so did I. Nothing. And especially when you consider how great Schultz looked the week before, I'm going to like I'm going to take my chances that the Niners defense is going to be able to stop Goddard more than the Philadelphia defense is able to stop George Kittle. And don't forget the age old tale about that Philadelphia defense for generations. They've never been able to stop the tight end. Just one more reason that I think having some George Kittle in your, uh, on your ticket is a good idea. And then secondly, going back to Debo Samuel, he's getting like plus 18 and a half yards against Devonte Smith. And I know you could be tempted to take Devontae Smith because you saw him have that nice week last week. But just look at Debo's game two weeks ago. This guy can take any screen to the house. And like I'd mentioned many times in this video already, I think he's going to be the focal point of the offense because he's such a dynamic player. So I'm going to take Debo Samuel at like plus 18 to beat Devontae Smith in receiving yards head to head. And those are the picks that I got for you for this NFC Championship game. I will be back with you to talk AFC Championship. Are we going to go over on Pacheco yet again after he cashes for us yet again? Time will tell. I will be back with you with that video relatively soon. Make sure you're subscribed to the Odd Shopper channel here. And when you, I know you guys, you're doing like trick-or-treating with these championship game bets and Super Bowl bets. I mean, there's only two games. I feel like you're going around house to house, video to video, taking one from every single one. Well, I hope you found some something that you like here. Don't think I'm that family guy who would, the family guy, that you would knock on my door and I'd give you pennies on Halloween. You think I would give you nickels? You think I'd give you candy corn? I wouldn't even give you Three Musketeers, one of the biggest scam candies anybody will ever give on Halloween. It's like somebody took a Snickers and said, hey, just make this a little bit worse and then give it to people. That's what Three Musketeers is. And I would never give you Three Musketeers bets on Championship Sunday. All right. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. I'll talk to you soon. Take it easy.